Um, I'm literally missing a book. What other book did I read? The Seven Year Slip. That's what I'm missing. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya, if you're new here. I'm a 24 year old living in the metro Atlanta area and I share pieces of my romance 828 life here on the internet. Today, I'm really excited to be filming my first book reading wrap up video. I gotta do this a little quick y'all because it's 5.49, the sun is gonna start setting super soon. And I wanted to go ahead and film this video so I can get it out to you guys tomorrow because I haven't posted a video in like three weeks and that was not my intention at all. Just bear with me y'all, okay, bear with me. I read five books in the month of January and February. Now my reading goal for the year is 20 books. So I'm on track to reach that goal. I'm not the type of reading girly who reads 10 books in one month, 15 books in one month. That's just not me y'all, okay? I don't know how the girls do it. In January, I read three books, and then in February, I read two books, which I was kind of disappointed about. I really wanted to try to read four books in February, just because I wanted to try to read more books than I had read in January. But I think I have to just give myself grace. I'm working full time. I'm also a creative. I'm a business owner. So it is what it is. As long as I reach my 20 books, goal for the year I'll be good I have my books here with me I also have my reading journal and I'm just gonna get started from like the first book that I read to my most recent read I actually want to let my camera down some <laughs> sorry for the, the change a little the first book that I read this year is bright young woman by Jessica Knoll. this book is a historical fiction and sort of a retelling um, based a little bit of brown well, not a little bit based a lot around Ted Bundy I really like this book though because although it's surrounding um, you know the that I don't know if I can say that on YouTube the unaliving that he committed it also isn't focused on him like the book never says his name um, the book also refers to him in a way that I feel like he kind of should be referred to anyway humans are weird so we like to romanticize serial killers at least in america and so this book does not do that at all um it really talks about how normal and regular of a person he was because so many people like to say oh he was so intelligent and he was so handsome like all these things and it's like guys this man was a monster like this it's told from the perspectives of two women that had an encounter with him one is pamela and one is ruth in the book pamela's roommate was unalived by said serial killer and so yeah it just talks about like her journey of dealing with that and then the other young woman had a completely different encounter with the serial killer i'm not going to go too much into detail about that perspective because like i don't want to ruin the book i gave this a three out of five stars i liked it but i feel like the ending was a little confusing like i don't know it was just sort of like what just happened at the end like i know what happened but i don't know what happened so this was the first book i've ever read by jessica Knoll. i know it says on here that she's the best-selling author of luckiest girl alive so if any of y'all have read that let me know your thoughts and if y'all have read this let me know what you think as well the next book i read this year was the seven year slip by ashley poston if you're on book talk book to bookstagram you've probably seen this book and for good reasons this was a really cute book and I picked this up because I wanted to get into romance since I've been an adult I haven't read like any romance books and so I wanted a really good one to kind of get me into that world and to see what it was talking about everybody in mom would be talking about romance books so I was like let's see if it really gives this book is about um, a young woman named Clementine she is living in her late aunt's apartment in New York and one day she walks into the apartment and there's a man in the apartment and she's like obviously freaking out like who are you what are you doing here come to find out he actually exists seven years in the past so to him she exists seven years in the future so it's a little bit of like magical realism and something I actually really like about this book is that it didn't explain the whole seven year slip time warp thing it didn't spend any time on that and I like that because it was just like, yeah, it's just the apartment is just like a wormhole, if you will. And 
it is what it is but it didn't explain why and i actually really enjoyed that i feel like it kind of made it more believable because some things in life just don't be explainable i really started paying attention to the covers of books more because they of course typically have something to do with the actual story and so the lemons on the cover i think that's so cute and the birds too overall this is just a really cute looking book i read this pretty quickly too because it was so good y'all like i see why this book is hyped because it's genuinely enjoyable now there was some spice and i'm not a spice girl i don't like to read spice so i did skip through it but it wasn't anything crazy like i wasn't skipping through half the book there were just a few moments that i skipped through so that also made this enjoyable for me i rated this a four out of five and now that i think about it i don't know why i did four out of five instead of five out of five because I kind of feel like this is a five out of five book like this is really good if you have not read this and you're looking for a romance read read the seven year slip obviously i have a thing for yellow books this year <laughs> because the next book i read is also yellow this is let us descend by jasmine ward jasmine ward is one of my favorite authors the first book i read by her was men we read so i actually had to read that in college and it's a memoir um and i don't know it was just a really good memoir i think i also enjoy the book because i had to write an essay on it and i got like a 98 on it <laughs> after that though in 2023 i read salvage the bones which is also jasmine ward really enjoyed it and then i read this jasmine ward is honestly an, an auto buy author for me um so i was pretty excited when i found out that she was releasing this this was um inducted into oprah's book club unfortunately i did not really like this book so the book cover says let us descend is a reimagining of american slavery as beautifully rendered as it is heart-wrenching searching harrowing replete i hope i said that right replete with transcendent love the novel is a journey from the rice fields of the carolinas to the slave markets of new orleans and into the fearsome heart of a louisiana sugar plantation and so pretty much as annis travels from the carolinas to new orleans she's accompanied by a spirit and this spirit was like with her mom and also with her grandma this spirit sort of like fights for her attention she also has other spirits fighting for her attention um and she's like she doesn't know which one really to trust but i think that's really why i did not enjoy the book i ain't into spirits i don't mess with no spirits okay i don't do demons <laughs> that just wasn't uh, i just didn't really care for that like after i finished reading this i really sat back and was like okay can i try to look at it from a different perspective maybe like just appreciate it for what it is but that was just such a large portion of the book that i couldn't look at it from like any other perspective i'm really trying to be better about not dnfing books so i was like well let me just get through it and read it especially when you're spending money on books it's like mm, girl finish reading that book i gave this a two out of five so um yeah i feel like if you're gonna read jasmine ward i wouldn't recommend this book to be your first one by her i would recommend men we read or salvage the bones all right we're getting out the yellow a little bit <laughs> next book i read was rules of engagement by stacy abrams i saw this in barnes and nobles and i was like i didn't know that stacy abrams write fiction books and so that's really what intrigued me stacy abrams is my spell my sister so i said okay let's pick it up and see what we think um and wasn't a fan of this book either wasn't a fan of this one either this book follows dr raleigh and adam and they're pretty much like fbi agents who are in love with each other but they like hate each other and they feel like they can't be together type deal so this book would switch back and forth between their perspectives but it wasn't even by chapter like you know with some books chapter one may be about the woman and then chapter two may be about the man with this book it would literally be like one sentence is from raleigh's perspective and the next sentence is from adam's perspective and that got me really lost quite often throughout the book because it was just switching perspectives a lot and i didn't really enjoy that it was hard to keep up with like who was saying what a lot of times as i was reading this stacy abrams is a political figure so i'll be honest y'all there was a lot of words in this book that i did not know and i typically like to look up words and what they mean but there was just so many in this that i did not know 
that I was just like, I don't even, I'm not gonna look this up because I don't care, it's fine. It's too many words. <laughs> and I, that probably, I know that sounds so bad, but just being honest. Okay, in my reading journal, I wrote finally some action. So that was something else. This book took a long time, I feel like, to really get some action. I think I picked this up more so for the action and not the romance, but I think this is really more so a romance read. But the romance wasn't even really romancing for real because for most of the book, they like hated each other. But they had these thoughts in their mind like, oh, she looks so good, oh, she's so attractive, you know, like that whole thing. It just wasn't interesting to me, it was boring. It was also hard for me to get through and I wanted to be enough this as well but like I said I'm trying to power through books this year I do think that it's cool though that Stacey Abrams had a, um, an Elias for a while so it says on here Stacey Abrams writing as Selena Montgomery Selena Montgomery was like her author Elias and then she finally decided to kind of like merge Selena and Stacey Abrams as one I actually gave this a one out of five stars there was spice in this as well of course again I skipped it I don't think it was too spicy though like I don't feel like there were too many spice scenes because again they acted like they hated each other for most of the book anyway um so yeah we're on our last book for this reading wrap up and that is while we were dating by Jasmine Guillory if you didn't watch the vlog where my boyfriend picked my book definitely go check that out because this was one of the books that he picked out and he did a good job I like this book this was the first book that I read by Jasmine Guillory I've heard a good bit about her and I definitely see why because this book was really cute it was written from the perspective of Anna Gardner who is a famous actress and Ben Stevens, who's an everyday kind of like marketing guru, they ended up working together on an ad campaign and of course, you know, a relationship or a connection blossoms from that. I have a lot of notes in my reading journal about this. I noticed that there was a good bit of cussing in this book. Um, I don't cuss and I don't like to hear a lot of cussing. so. You know, that was kind of like, mm, but you know, whatever, I get it, people cuss. I like that this book was written recently um, because it references things that are like popular now. For example, Anna Gardner was wearing Lululemon and I just think that's so cute, I love that. Especially like she's a black woman and I love black girls in Lulu. I feel like I related to Ben and Anna's stories like individually, which made the book more enjoyable because it's like, you can really get in the mind of the characters, you know, like you understand where they're coming from. Now, this book right here, this book was spicy. This book was spicy. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I was skipping through those parts, but with books, you have to kind of read a little to know when the spice ends. So I would skip and like read to see if it was over and it wouldn't be over and I'd be like, oh my gosh, like, this book is spicy. I ain't gonna lie. This book is spicy. Now, I haven't read a lot of romance reads, so to be honest, I don't know how spicy it can get. I'm sure it can get more spicier than this, but for me, I was like, oh, okay. So I can definitely say that I'm more of a closed door romance type of girl. I don't want to know what y'all doing in the bedroom. I don't want to read about that. But I feel like, you know, with a lot of romances, that is what comes with it. Um... And a lot of people like that so hey this had a lot of themes of like mental health black men going to therapy and being emotional i think this would be considered forbidden love trope i'm still learning like the book community language but i'm pretty sure this would be considered forbidden love a little bit because they were co-workers there was a part in this book where ben had kind of realized that like people can have um room for multiple people in their heart and not from a romantic perspective, but just like your family, right? And I wrote in my reading journal, this makes me think of God's love for us. He has many children, but having many children doesn't take away the love he has for you. To be honest, it's the same way with people in your life who really love you. Them meeting someone else or loving someone else doesn't take away their love for you. And I don't know, that just really touched me. At the end, in my journal, I wrote so cute. Wish there wasn't so much spice, but I love this book. I gave this a four out of five stars. I definitely will be looking forward to reading more books by Jasmine Guillory. I believe this book is a part of a series that she has, but you don't have to read the books in order. They just kind of like overlap some and like some of the characters in this book are in another book. It's that type of deal. You know, it's like a world kind of. So this book kind of made up for some of my 
lesser rated books um, from January and February. This and The Seven Year Slip. Like, these two really did it for me. These two books really carried me. Those are the books that I read in the month of January and February. Let me know if you guys have read any of these and what are y'all thoughts. Also, let me know what your recommendations are based on like the books I shared with you. If you have a book that you think I would like, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely add it to my TBR. Thank y'all so much for watching. More book content coming soon and I will see y'all in my next video.